During the Cold War, Europe was divided between the Western Capitalist Bloc and the Eastern Communist Bloc. Quite unfortunately for Germany, this dividing line ran directly through their country, which as a consequence of their poor performance in World War II, was now no longer a country, but two countries, West Germany and East Germany, a state in which it would remain until its reunification in 1990 towards the end of the Cold War. This meant that during the Cold War, Germany was in quite a precarious position. It was still reeling from the aftermath of the deadliest conflict in human history being brought to an end on their doorstep. But now the victors of World War II were stood on opposite ends of that doorstep, making rude faces at one another and stockpiling nuclear armaments that promised an even deadlier conflict should this Cold War ever turn hot. As you can imagine, the German people were not exactly overjoyed with this situation. They did not want their homeland to be the center point of yet another world war, an atomic war. Well, Germany, your fear is understandable and you make some compelling points. Unfortunately for you, Hitler. Need we go into further detail? Nine. Nine. And so both the Western and Eastern blocs continued for decades to occupy Germany, preparing for a potential war to break out. The Western Allies feared that were the Soviets to invade from the East, it would be difficult to stop them overrunning West Germany, given the sheer size of the Russian army. The West's best bet might be to simply retreat from the invading Soviets while bombarding them in an effort to slow their advance while the West organized a counterattack. Then the British came up with an idea, Ugh, I hate when they do that. To slow down a Soviet invasion, the West could put mines along likely routes of advance. But not just any mines, nuclear mines. Everything had to be nuclear during the Cold War. But there was some sense behind the idea, not only would a nuke annihilate large swathes of an invading army, but it would also irradiate the area and deny occupation. Maybe the Soviets would just give up trying to hold the territory if it was contaminated. The old, if I can't have it, no one can. There was one problem. At this time, the Brits' nuclear development was not particularly advanced. Their first operational nuke, the Blue Danube, was a little less powerful than the Hiroshima bomb and was first delivered to stockpile in 1953, a time when the Brits had no bombers capable of carrying them. Maybe that's why, the following year in 1954, they decided it would be a good idea to make nuclear landmines based on the Blue Danube's design. If you can't bring the nukes to your enemy, just let the enemy come to your nukes. The project for the nuclear landmines was originally called Brown Bunny, then changed to Blue Bunny, before finally settling on Blue Peacock. The designers were obviously possessed of a similarly silly spirit as the people in charge of the name, because the Blue Peacock was a bit of a disaster of design flaws. Firstly, the thing was huge and weighed about seven tons, so not exactly easy to bury. Now, thankfully, the designers didn't want to configure the Blue Peacock like a conventional pressure-triggered landmine. It would be a bit silly if a nuclear detonation relied upon a soldier's boot treading on an unfortunate piece of dirt. Instead, the Brits wanted to wait until the Soviets had set up supply depots and headquarters along their routes of advance, and then the mines could be triggered remotely via a three mile long wire and blow it all to hell. Of course, by the time the Soviets had all this set up on top of the mine, holding a position with the detonator just three miles away may have been untenable, so there would need to be other triggers as well. The first was in the form of anti-tampering measures. Obviously, there was a decent chance the Russians would discover these massive mines buried in the ground. So, once they were armed, they couldn't be moved, and the casing couldn't be pierced or flooded with water without activating the detonation sequence. Once activated, the Blue Peacock would explode within 10 seconds, a short period of grace that allowed the mines to verify and filter out false positives, like vibrations from artillery fire or heavy machinery, but did not afford enough time for the enemy to evacuate the area. 
The other trigger was the mere passage of time. Once armed, the blue peacock would explode after eight days. So even if the allies lost access to the detonator, the thing would explode a week later anyways. Sounds good so far, but there was another problem. If the Soviets were to invade West Germany, there was a good chance they'd do it in the winter. Germany had already learned its lesson about fighting the Russians in the cold. They were pretty good at it, so they might opt to do it again. This would pose a problem as the bombs may then need to be detonated in freezing conditions. The Brits had about as much faith in these bombs operating properly in the cold as they had in the Irish governing themselves, or the Scots governing themselves, or the Welsh governing themselves, or the Indians governing themselves. The Brits therefore knew they had to protect the bomb from the elements. Initially, they thought perhaps an insulated blanket, like a giant tea cozy, but if the ground was frozen solid, it probably wasn't going to be enough. They needed a source of heat to keep the bomb warm. The solution, well, you're probably not going to believe this, chickens. A compartment could be filled with chickens, separate from the rest of the mechanism to ensure they didn't peck apart the wiring. The chickens would be given enough food and water to last them about eight days, so their body heat would keep the bomb warm enough to explode at the end of its arming period. Yes, they intended to power the blue peacock with chickens. By 1957, there were two Blue Peacock prototypes, with the British Army waiting on an order of 10 Blue Peacocks for use in Germany. However, the Ministry of Defence cancelled the project in early 1958. I'd like to think that came about after someone stumbled into the R&D department and said, What in God's name are you doing in here? The official reason for the cancellation was that the bomb was deemed a political disaster waiting to happen. Although both the Western and Eastern blocs generally viewed their occupation of Germany as something that the Germans had brought on themselves, what with the Hitler and the details that need no further discussion and all that, West Germany was still a Western ally. If West Germany could expect their allies to blow up their country and blanket them in nuclear fallout, well, maybe that would call the alliance into question? Like, what's the Eastern Bloc going to do to us that you haven't already? The Cold War only had the potential to escalate into all-out war, but the real battle was for influence. The Western powers did not want the people of Germany to think that they were better off with the Eastern Bloc. So the Blue Peacock project was cancelled because its existence jeopardised the real and current goals of the Western Bloc over a situation that had yet to occur and, as history has shown, never occurred. As such, the project was kept secret until after the Cold War had ended and Germany had been reunited. The files were declassified on April 1st, 2004 which, paired with the outlandish nature of the project, led many to believe this was an April Fool's joke. A representative from the National Archives made a statement in response. It does seem like an April Fool, but it most certainly is not. The civil service does not do jokes. Unfortunately for the world, I do do jokes, and you can hear more of them in my many other videos about similar topics, if you choose to watch them. You can also choose to subscribe to see more of these videos in the future, but you have no choice in joining my channel membership and supporting me monetarily. Money is good for me. Thank you, and until next time, stay safe. A state in which it would remain until its reunification Renunification promised an even deadlier conflict. Mm. Swades of an, an army. <laughs> the designers were obviously possessed of a similarly silly spirit as the people in charge of the name because the blue peacock. Well, fuck.